we feeling? How we feeling, babes? How we feeling after that? Triumphant and amazing Killing Eve finale, huh? Are we feeling good? Are we feeling good tonight? This video is not about the Killing Eve finale, although it does sort of go into it. Eve Palastri is the real villain of Killing Eve. And I'm gonna prove it to you with my three point plan. The first part is going to go over Villanelle, the second part is gonna go over Eve, and the third part is going to go over how I think season four should have gone and how I thought it was going to go. Honestly, um, the way I wanted it to go was brilliant. It was absolutely phenomenal and it would, it was leading there, it was leading there and they just chickened out at the last minute. Oh, sorry, all this pussy footing around like, oh, we got to get them together. And it does also, my three point plan, the ending does also delve into a theory that my lovely wife who's sitting just outside of the screen that she had and I am going to talk about that a little bit but uh, mostly focus on the theory that I had as to where season 4 was going. Villanelle. Let's talk about Villanelle. Can I, can I sit properly? Oh I don't know. Oh my god. No, I'm always going to sit really stupidly. That's just how I sit. From the beginning, Villanelle is posited as this like conniving, devious, dangerous assassin. You know, a little bit childlike. Even into the second season, we see her, you know, with the stickers thing. I, I reference that literally every time I pick up stickers. And that is at least three times a day because I'm obsessed with stickers. Seeming to not have a lot of control over her impulses. So when Constantine says don't go after this perfume genius, she goes after her because that's what she wants to do. She doesn't care about the consequences of her actions and she's not exactly punished for the consequences of her actions either. I mean, even when she goes into the prison in season one, we see that she gets in trouble on purpose and she gets out of prison really easily because the 12 will always back her up. She's their number one asset. In doing that, we see that she wins over and over again, but also she's working for the 12, so she really never wins. She always is at a loss because she's always owned by the 12 and she can't get out of that system. For at least the first two-ish, maybe two and a half seasons, she is really happy to work for the 12. Or at least she's happy in doing what she wants and it just so happens to be that what she wants to do aligns with what the 12 want her to do. And then when Dasha comes along, she is given the opportunity to excel and prove her worth. She doesn't actually get that because throughout season two her priorities and her motivations change, which is great. We love to see a growth, personal growth. And that is something that Eve doesn't get. So the major conflicts between Eve and Villanelle are I'm not sure if this is the technical term for it, like in, in writing um, or movie script. Their main conflicts are internal, so what that means is basically their motivations and their personalities clash as opposed to external where they want to be together and their personalities are fine but everything else keeps coming at them. So we see in season one where Eve stabs Villanelle and we're like, why would she do that? Keep watching. So she stabs Villanelle and that's an internal thing. She does that. It's not someone else breaking into the apartment and stabbing Villanelle. Second season, Villanelle shoots Eve. Again, it's an internal conflict because their personalities and their goals and their motivations don't align. Instead of something coming in and separating them, they're separated by their personalities or their internal conflict. What we see of Villanelle is that she is motivated by 
desire to just do whatever she wants. And what she wants in the second season predominantly is to be with Eve. She doesn't get what she wants until the very last episode and then it's taken away almost immediately. She never gets what she wants throughout the series. In fact, is knocked back over and over again, whether through internal conflict, Eve stabbing Villanelle, Villanelle shooting Eve, or the narrative taking that away. So what we see in season four is just this complete abandonment of the getting together arc in favor of, I don't know. I don't know what the purpose of the first episode where Eve is going off shits and Villanelle is trying to join the church and they're not together and then when they are together Eve slaps Villanelle I like that was so confusing and honestly the majority of stuff that's been written since the finale is about the finale so I haven't actually read anything about why that happened and I, I don't know why they went in that direction like there is no animus there is no motivation present in the telling of the story either verbally or story wise as to why Eve slaps Villanelle and rebuffs her so this is again uh, an instance of internal conflict because Eve is the one doing it but it doesn't make sense in this except for where I think the story is going but because it didn't go that way it just doesn't make sense just plain doesn't make sense so as season three progresses she gets more and more humanized and it's especially in this episode are you from Pinna where we see her at her most vulnerable at her most human which is especially the scene where she confronts her mother she even looks vulnerable. She's wearing this dowdy dress, you know, she's wearing an apron. She wants to be seen as vulnerable so that her mother will accept her. And that of course doesn't work. So Villanelle goes back to the killing and the evil and the whatever to try and gain some control over her life. But because she saves some of her family, we see that she's not this heartless monster. Like she can grow and evolve into someone who does care about her family and about other people. Whereas before she was solely self-serving. She saves her brothers and even gives uh, the little one um, tickets or money to an Elton John concert and then blows up the house where the rest of the horrid people are. So while she is still Villanelle, we do see her grow and evolve into a person, really, a person with personal desires outside of killing, a person who is affected by what her mother did to her. Whereas in the first season, when Villanelle is confronted about her mother, she just says, oh, my mother has really shitty hair. So she either doesn't care or doesn't let herself care. But in this episode, Are You From Pinna, we see her visibly shaking, visibly crying, visibly upset at something that she did and also at the trauma that her mother inflicted on her, which led to her being picked up by the 12, which led to her being an assassin. So we do see her grow and evolve. Unfortunately, we don't see the same for Eve. During season three, Eve and V only interact a handful of times. The most prominent ones where they do interact are the bus scene where they kiss, but also slap the shit out of each other it's really funny i love that scene most significantly the last scene of the season which is where they unite on the bridge move walk away and like orpheus and eurydice turn back to each other that is proof that they want to be together that they choose to be together. It was a beautiful scene that had me literally on the edge of my seat, clapping and cheering and going, turn around, turn around, turn around. But then what happened? 
Like, literally, what the fuck happened? What the f According to the Bleeding Cool article by Addie Tantamed, sorry if I mispronounced that name, um, Villanelle has the most freedom in season one, but is punished in every subsequent season for her joyful ruthlessness. I don't see season three as a punishment. I see season three as her getting whatever she wants, but her desires change over the season. So I see the ending of season three as getting what she ultimately wants, which is what we see from the very first episode. She wants to be with Eve. End of season three, she gets what she wants. That is why season four is so infuriating because they got what they wanted. Even Eve wanted to be with Villanelle. Like in the train scene where they're in the station in Scotland, I think, you know, they have this longing moment where you can tell that they want to be together. So Eve's not just tracking Villanelle down to get to the 12, she's tracking her down to be with her and you can sense the longing in their gazes, in their actions, in the silence between them, in the music that happens as they see each other. It's so beautiful. You can, it's like, honestly, the longing. <sighs> From the beginning of season four, I saw the ending that they wanted from season one to three which is V and Eve getting together, I saw that as the tragic ending. I saw that as the ending I didn't want, basically from the beginning. Because the first time we see them together in season four, Eve slaps Villanelle. And we see from previous seasons when she slapped Nico that, not proof, but kind of a harbinger of a, a a relationship that's going to fail. Eve is angry at Nico, lashes out, she doesn't know how to control her emotions and she doesn't really know what she wants, she's very confused and so when Nico tries to help her and is is scared for her, she slaps him and then we see he leaves her, he doesn't want anything to do with her anymore but then again she slaps Villanelle and Villanelle continues to pine after her. Uh, I don't know about you, but if someone slapped me, I would not take that kindly. And in fact, someone has slapped me before and I did not take that kindly then. I would not do that now. Showing that what we see from a previous season in season one, directly again in season four, but then somehow one is wrong and the other is justified, but it's the same action. It, this doesn't necessarily have to mean that something that you do in one season is necessarily bad in the other season, as long as there's personal growth between them. But I'll talk about this. There is no personal growth for Eve. There is actually devolution. So at the end of season four, Villanelle's death is seen as a tragedy. And it is a tragedy, not to Laura Neal, but to us as the viewers, because we have grown to love her. I mean, we loved her from the beginning, right? But we have seen her grow throughout the seasons. We have seen her evolve. We have seen her cry and scream and kill people who deserve to be killed. You know, we love her. She's our girl. Well, I actually kind of headcutted her as non-binary, like a he, she, they, non-binary. You know, she does butch, she does femme, she's butch, you know? She's great. In my mind, Villanelle is a he, she, they, non-binary. We love her. We do love her. And the outcry of just abject anger and misery at her death that the fandom has has shown, has expressed, is just proof that we didn't want her to die. And the way that Laura Neal and the other creators justified it was so infuriating. I think that the tragedy of Villanelle's death is expressed by both the fans and the narrative because we don't get an ending. We don't get an ending. Even 
supernatural, which until Killing Eve had the worst ending of any TV show I have ever seen, we still got an epilogue. We still got closure. We still got an ending. We did not get that for Killing Eve, and that is why I think that this ending is even worse than the Supernatural ending. They were both bad, they were both abysmal, they were both terrible, but the loss that I felt at the Killing Eve finale, the that anger and, and just the, the feeling of being cheated that I feel at the Killing Eve finale was not what I felt at the Supernatural finale. I felt other things at the Supernatural finale, but I feel very cheated out of out of a proper send-off for Villanelle. I feel very much like the writers did not care about her. And Laura Neal having said that this is something of a rebirth for Eve means that they did not care about Villanelle about this character that they had built, that the show had built from season one to the very end of the show. They did not care about her. And that, that is actually something that they have in common with the Supernatural finale. <laughs> Except, say that for another, say that for another, Villanelle's death is a tragedy. So Laura Neal and the other um, producers and the other creators talked about Villanelle's death as being something of a rebirth for Eve. And we can see that in the imagery that they used. Rebirth meaning like an actual, like a water birth, you know, Eve surfacing from the water. And we see that in the first episode where uh, Villanelle is reborn in the Christian sense as a Christian. So we have this water motif. We have a, a rebirth with Villanelle. We have a rebirth with Eve. She sinks down and as she does, the blood from her wounds, um, from the bullet wounds, floats behind her into this uh, parabola wings type motif. And it's bad. It's just straight up bad. It's like they really went ham with the Christian thing. I mean, <laughs> from the very beginning, they were like, hey, how about we make Villanelle into Jesus? Why? What was the purpose of that? Honestly, I would have to really dig to find some of this and I did not want to dig past the first page on Google because the ending made me so actually upset that I don't have time for this show anymore. At least I don't have time for the fourth season. But I don't know, I feel so defeated after this. I feel so like, why, what's the point? It's. It's just another bury your gaze trope. Like people have said that all along. They've said it's bury your gaze and it is. <laughs> you know my joke about how do you know if a character is gay? It's because they're fucking dead. Yeah. Luke Jennings, who is the author of the Villanelle novels has said himself, the two, V and Eve were punished for the bloody, erotically impelled chaos they have caused. Compared to what Laura Neal and the rest have said about Eve being reborn through this tragedy and going on to live her life as a normal person, it it is just a tragedy for both of them in that sense because Villanelle literally dies and that's typically the tragic ending like in the Shakespearean way but Eve going on to live a normal life after this? Why the fuck would she want to be a normie? No one wants to be a normie except normies and they're fucked in the head. It is just impossible to imagine Eve as going back to her normal MI5 boring white bread buttered toast, cream beige walls, life after this, you know, with a fucking husband and a chicken. 
She literally shot Constantine in the hand at the beginning of the season. Like, I think that's the first scene, right? She goes to shoot fucking Constantine in the hand and he has that, he has that wound for the rest of the season. Um, that was some boss shit and they expect me to believe that that Eve is going to just go to her normal life after this as if the last four seasons didn't happen? Nah, bitch. Nah. And that begs the question, why would they punish Villanelle? Why would they punish a character who has really only expressed interest in women? At one point, she does date that guy Sebastian, not cut up at all about his death. And also, the sex between them, that's not how you have sex with someone you are attracted to. Just straight up, that's the kind of sex I was having with men, and I'm a fucking lesbian, dude, come on. Uh, as a lesbian who was suffering combat for the first 26 years of my life and having sex with men for like a good eight years of that, um, that is purely sex to scratch an itch. It's not desire, it's not infatuation, it's not even attraction, it is straight up some self-harming bullshit. Villanelle uses sex to get what she wants and I guess what she wanted in that time was just to have influence over this guy, you know, kind of worm her way into the community or maybe just possibly just to have sex, it's fine. So Villanelle is killed in a brutal way right after she completes the two goals of the show. So the overarching goals are to kill the 12 and to get with Eve. She completes both of those goals and then is killed. I'll tell you why. I'll tell you why. It's because she's a fucking lesbian. This is straight up lesbophobia. And after being hate crimed for like a solid month um, by realtors, uh, I can tell you, I know lesbophobia when I see it. I know the puritanical bullshit that people in positions of power like Laura Neal and everyone who worked at Supernatural that informs their beliefs in killing lesbians, in, in deciding that, well, lesbians really have no value because they're not attracted to men. It's like, no, we couldn't possibly have any value outside of whose dick is inside us, really, we couldn't. It is a bury your gaze trope, but it is specifically lesbophobia. Like, why is the bisexual woman saved and rebirthed? so she can go on and live her life with men because her life was so normal when she was with Nico. But as soon as she in expressed interest in Villanelle, oh, that's when it started to go wrong. And that hurts so bad to see a character who was unapologetically attracted to women solely and unapologetically murderous and complicated and ruthless and and just unashamed in who she was just unashamed in who she was and to see her brutally murdered for the sake of eve living a normal life that hurts i am disgusted so the show doesn't punish eve in the same way that it punishes villanelle uh, the show does not punish Eve for loving men, for being with men, and not for being bisexual. It punishes Eve for loving a woman, Villanelle. And where, as far as I'm aware, Villanelle is the only love interest, female love interest for Eve. She does hook up with Helene, but Helene is evil, so there was never going to be any, like, real thing there. Whereas with Villanelle, I could honestly see her um, with Gunn. She goes to Gunn's island and they tussle and then they're like, you know, do you want to hang out? Do you want to live here? And then immediately Gunn is evil because there couldn't possibly be any 
other relationship for Villanelle aside from Eve. Like, God, no. She has to be with Eve. Well, being with Eve gets her fucking killed. So, so the show punishes Eve for loving a woman, and it punishes V for loving women. There's this um, opportunity to be with another woman, Garten, and honestly, I'm going to write so much fan fiction about them. They're so hot. Gun is amazing. Like, literally, gun, guns. Oh my god, did you see her guns? Like, literal guns and her biceps. But the show doesn't allow them to be together because there's only one viable option. Because they couldn't have two viable options between Eve and somebody else for Villanelle. But then loving Eve gets Villanelle killed. So what's the fucking point, bruv? So Laura Neal says that Villanelle's death would benefit Eve in her moving on to something bigger and better. Like what? The, the 12 are dead. Her lover is dead. Do you think that Eve is not going to mourn Villanelle? Do you think that Eve is not going to spend months, years, desperate, alone, listless, mourning her lover who she's pined after for four seasons? Do you not think that that's going to take a toll on Eve? Apparently fucking not. Apparently Laura Neal does not think so. Because Eve's just gonna move on. So moving on to something bigger and better implies that a sapphic character has to die so that the main character can move on with their life when previously men died so that the main characters can move on with their lives. So when the show was like killing men to make the female characters more interesting it seems like a huge slap in the face to feminists, to women, to sapphics in particular, lesbians in particular, to say well now we're killing women, we're killing lesbians to benefit the main character. Because they killed Gunn too. Oh well they, they blinded her, that's horrible. You can dislike a character for the, for the type of character they are, but then you can also feel a different way about them depending on like what the actual intent was with the writers. I see that turning Gunn suddenly evil is the writer's way of saying Villanelle's only choice is Eve. And that is so annoying to me because Eve is not a choice that Villanelle should make because as we see Villanelle fucking dies loving Eve. They literally embrace and then Villanelle is shot. It's like, okay, you choose Eve, you love Eve, you kill Eve, and then you're killed. That's what the show said. And so I look at that as the ultimate tragedy of the show. And they didn't even mean it as a tragedy. They meant it as a redemption for Eve. So let's talk about Eve. It's all about Eve. At the end of season three, we see Villanelle and Eve, not literally, but uh, metaphorically embrace, I mean, despite them being a hundred meters apart, we see them embrace and come together. With, oh my God, it's, it's so perfect. Oh my God, it's so perfect. Um, we see them come together and share their ideas of like how they want their lives to go. Eve literally says, when I see the future, I just see your face. Oh, I'm gonna cry. Oh, so beautiful. Oh, so beautiful. I was watching the show live throughout season three, and I just. I remember the fan reaction. So I remember. I remember a lot of people were very disappointed um, in season three with the lack of Eve. One of the things that was uh, said a lot was, okay, it's called Killing Eve, but where the fuck is Eve? <laughs> so that was, that was something that the fans were really disappointed by. And I did see season three as more about Villanelle and her journey because we didn't really see much growth from Eve. As for what we see in season four, we see 
more of a devolution. And I say that because basically from the beginning, Eve is shown as this normie fucking um, MI5 worker who then once she meets Villanelle or once Villanelle is introduced to the show, she kind of starts this descent, you know, into depravity, bisexuality, like all this really cool stuff. She kills some people, you know, she she fucks up a lot. She she gets other people killed. So it's this like slowly winding down of um of her character. And then I do see in season four how that is just ramped up to the max. She is mean, she slaps Villanelle, she's callous, she has casual sex with this guy she doesn't care about, she shoots Constantine in the hand, you know, and I don't think that there was really any love lost between them, but uh, that's a pretty hardcore move. So she suddenly is this like badass who like rides a motorcycle. I didn't watch season four live, so I didn't get the reactions from the fans. I was very confused as to like where the season was going, especially when she slapped Villanelle. That was a really like, oh, they don't want these characters to be together. They really don't want these characters to be together. And as we see from the finale, they did not want these characters to be together, but not in the way that I thought they were going. So what we see from Eve is that she's losing more and more of her inhibitions. She slaps Nico. That's huge, like that is domestic abuse. She does it out of instinct. She doesn't even think about what she's done. You know, she carries on as if it's normal. And then as the seasons progress, especially in season two, where that um, psychopath profiler is introduced, that first scene of his, hilarious. But as he's talking to Carol and he says, you know, um, Eve is not in the headspace that she needs to be to continue looking for Villanelle. Why? <laughs> what do you mean she's not in the headspace? Like, isn't she uh, an MI6 agent? Isn't she like a profiler or at least hunting down psychopaths? Why would she not be in the headspace? That is because Eve herself is a psychopath. The profiler says, have you been acting in a way that isn't typical for you? And she goes, yes. And she's visibly scared by the way that she's been acting, you know, in that little bit of a reprieve where she gets to have some introspection about how she is acting, her, her behavior since Villanelle has been introduced. It's erratic, it's dangerous. Um, she's scared of herself. She does things to hurt other people. She gets other people hurt. And she doesn't seem to care that much. Of course, she's upset at Bill dying, and, and that's fair. But as the seasons progress, she gets less and less upset about other people dying and more how it affects her. In the third season, she is very much ups, ups, upset, upset with Villanelle and she very much wants to distance herself from all that. She gets drunk at Kenny's party and makes a scene. She is not acting like herself. And as she is drawn more and more into the world of psychopathy, she exposes herself as a psychopath. I wanna talk about borderline personality disorder, but I have a disclaimer. Uh, borderline personality disorder has been termed basically female psychopathy so as sexist as that is i do want to talk about that being the case i i don't want to diagnose eve with having borderline personality i want to talk about the the symptoms of borderline personality that she displays i do not want to demonize bpd I do not want to demonize it. I'm not saying that everyone with BPD is a psychopath. It is a very complicated and intense mental illness to live with. And if you have it, that's an illness that you can manage. Trust me, I have bipolar, I have ADHD. I'm pretty sure I have a personality disorder. So I'm not here to demonize anyone with a personality disorder. And I don't want any of my viewers 
to either think that I am or to do it yourself. It is a disorder that people live with like ADHD, like autism, it is a disorder. It is not a death sentence. It does not mean that you are crazy. It does not mean that you are a bad person. It is just something that you have that complicates your life. It's manageable. You can live with this and live a perfectly normal life or a perfectly functional life, I should say. Who the fuck wants to be normal anyway? Your personality disorder makes it interesting, love. Don't listen to anybody else. So I just wanna talk about that Eve's symptoms of BPD lead her to behave in ways that the show has deemed psychopathic. I, I don't wanna agree with borderline personalities, female psycho psychopathy or anything like that. I believe that you should think of your your disorders, your illnesses, your whatevers um, as your complications, if that's how you want to think about it, as something that you have, not something that you are. You have symptoms, you have a disorder. That doesn't mean that you are those symptoms or that you are that disorder. I am not my bipolar. I am not my ADHD. I am not my, well, like, I kind of might be my HPD. It's up for debate. I have always felt like my identity is very shifting. It's very illusory. It's very temporal. Is that the word? I think I'm thinking of temporal. Um, it's very dependent on the moment and who I'm around. And psychopaths don't have an identity. So we look at Eve and we see her as like, I mean, what is she like? Does she have any interests? Does she have any hobbies? Like, you know, does she ever really define herself? Not that I can remember off the top of my head, forgive, like, honestly, point it out in the comments if you can give me an answer to this, but does Eve have an identity outside of her job? Does she have an identity outside of rebelling against the confines of a normal life? I don't think she does. I think she is very much um, constantly shifting as well. I think she adapts to the moment and her indecisiveness and her rash decision making and her impulsivity are very typical of psychopathic behavior. So I want to talk about some of the symptoms that she displays. So, fear of abandonment, um, that's a big one. Um, I would also say fear of rejection. Fear of rejection, RSD, rejection sensitive dysphoria, is a huge one for BPD. So Eve very much clings on to Nico, even when he has expressly said that he does not want to be with her anymore. So basically, Nico wants Eve out of his life, and she refuses to let him go. You know, there's that scene where she goes to see him and he's at Gemma's place and then Eve like messes up her underwear drawer or whatever and it's like, why, why are you doing that? She sees that Nico is rejecting her and she's acting out. So this fear of abandonment manifests in ways like going to visit Nico in the hospital after Dasha has speared him through the throat with a trident. He literally says, piss off. He does not want to see her and she spirals. And that's a clear sign of a fear of abandonment. And I think honestly, going with my psychopath theory is that Eve mourns Bill's death, not just losing a friend, but also because she's now lost one of the only people who will ever stick up for her, who will ever see her as more than just an agent, more than just Nico's girlfriend or fiance or wife or whatever. I don't, I don't know, are they married? Are they married? Another symptom is unstable relationships. Every relationship she has is unstable, let's just say that. Unclear or shifting self image, and that's what I was talking about before, is that she doesn't have a clear view of who she is. 
she doesn't have any hobbies, she doesn't have any interests, like, you know, she gets a job outside of it and it's just like hacking up chicken or whatever and it's like she's not fulfilled by that, she doesn't like it, she just wants to be left alone. It's, it's a pretty sad existence and she doesn't seem to know who she is outside of being the one to take Villanelle down. That's why she's so driven to take Villanelle down because it gives her purpose, it gives her an image, it gives her someone to be. I'll move past self-harm because it's a tricky one to get into, but self-harm can be a lot of things. Like one of the one of the things that pops into my mind is casual sex is self-harm, and that is what she's engaging in with uh, Raph, I think his name is, um, in season four. She doesn't care about him. She's just having sex to scratch an itch. But also with self-harm, we do see her in maybe the first episode where she's got that knife and she presses it to her thigh and she actually draws blood. It's a bit weird, but you know, it's not definitive proof, but along with the other symptoms, it could be something. Extreme emotional swings. <sighs> yeah. <laughs> Constantly. <laughs> Watch the show. Um, chronic feelings of emptiness is one. I'm not going to say definitively. I can't remember if she ever expresses this feeling of emptiness. I, I can't say for certain. Could be something that she feels. Um, I'm going to move on. Explosive anger. Yeah. On the bus. She ex loads when she sees Villanelle. Feeling suspicious or out of touch with reality. We can't necessarily say for certain whether how Eve feels aside from how she's expressed how she's feeling. So as the show goes on, we see Villanelle more and more being the voice of reason as, as Eve sinks further and further into her psychopathy. In the second half of season three and in season four, even though they are wildly different in every single way, we do see Villanelle starting to get out of the life. She wants to take down the Twelve, she wants to live her own life and be free from them. V only gets back into the Twelve plotline, killing the Twelve, taking down the Twelve, because Eve asks her to. But then Villanelle kind of leads the charge on that anyway, and then she ends up killing the Twelve. And if Eve hadn't asked her to come back, hadn't gone to Guns Island specifically to get her to come back and do the killing, she wouldn't have died. She could have just settled on the island with Gun, and then Eve could have fucked off. I don't, I don't care at this point. And in fact, while Villanelle is killing the Twelve in a very cool scene, um, we see Eve dancing and laughing and having a joyous time with random people she doesn't know. And is that not a metaphor for what Laura Neal was getting at when she said that Eve would just get over Villanelle's death? Like, it's, it's just fine? You know, Eve can get on with her life now? It's like, well, Villanelle's doing the dirty work and Eve's just having a good time. It is like Supernatural and the last episode just came out of left field. Very antithetical to the rest of the season. On to the next part of the video. How season four should have gone. Like I said, Eve was slipping more and more into psychopathy, into depravity, into her erratic behavior. And I think they should have really leaned into that. That's where they should have gone. They should have just completely given into Eve being a psychopath and not needing anyone. And honestly, the, the way that Laura and Neil describe Eve leaving the life and leaving Villanelle to die and being reborn, honestly, that sounds like her being a psychopath anyway, so what was the fucking point? What was the fucking point of the last episode? They should have just had Eve killing the Twelve the whole season and just being like, well, Villanelle, I don't want you anymore. And the way that the season went with Eve being so cruel to Villanelle, I couldn't see a happy ending. 
And when they did get together, it just pissed me off. It just pissed me off to say that Villanelle is her own person now. She's learned from her mistakes. She's a good person and she wants a life of happiness and joy. But with someone who slapped her in the face, who cut her out of her life, was just horrible to her the whole season until the last episode when Eve needed something from her and then even in the last episode they were rude to each other. And you expect me to believe that they would have been happy together. At the end of season three I could have believed it. Not in Laura Neal's universe could I believe that they would be happy together. And honestly, if that's the way that they were going, maybe Villanelle's death is a release from the horrible life she would have lived with Eve. And that is disgusting. It is absolutely disgusting. Completely take away a, a character's agency after they've spent four seasons growing. Which leads me to the theory that uh, my wife came up with, which is that the way you join the Twelve is by killing a member of the Twelve. And in killing a member of the Twelve, you join the Twelve. So, Eve kills the Twelve and, in the, and is then like, well, we've got all these agents around and there are all these terrorist threats that we should take care of. Perhaps I should be the leader. And I should give out assignments to these, you know, and it just goes on and on. And it's like, you know, well, she's sending out agents to take care of terrorist threats. She's sending out people to kill other people. I mean, doesn't that sound like the 12 to you? And that's how it should have gone. And then Eve becomes the criminal mastermind she should have been all along. Villanelle should have gotten with Gunn and lived her life peacefully as happy little lesbian wives living in their seaside cottage, their island cottage. But of course, lesbians can never get what we want, and we are all doomed to die in tragic boating accidents, literally dead in the 